as gems, I'll be looking at um, an algorithm for performing multiple point geostatistics, which is called SNESIM. So I'll uh, work with this example, which you'll fi also find in the MPS book. And so if you'd like this data can also be made available. So here um, we're working with a categorized version of the worker lake data set uh, because the SNESIM algorithm only works with categorical data. There are other algorithms uh, for MPS that work with continuous data, such as image quilting and direct sampling. But here we limit ourselves to the, to the simple categorical case. So what, what I've done here is I've created three categories. Uh, one category is sort of uh, lake, lowland, canyon area. Uh, the other area category is mountain area. And then we have something, let's call it foothill area. That will be then uh, the green zones here. So ob obviously we get some kind of a nesting of these uh, various categories, uh, but then it's not quite like that. There's even um, within within the mountains, there are even uh, low, lower areas, so they're modeled uh, differently. What we have available to us is a point set uh, where we've measured the three categories and a training image that's reflecting uh, the kind of variation that we see. And there, of course, we see again the same kind of uh, nesting of, of the observations. In addition, uh, I've given myself so-called soft probabilities. You wonder where do we get those? Uh, well, in uh, many circumstances, those can be gotten by looking at, uh, for example, um, some soft data and calibrating some soft data with the point set into uh, probabilities. And in uh, the homework, we, we do that by means of logistic regression. It could be also other methods being used. The point of this method is that in the end, you get uh, maps of probabilities. And so if you have three categories, then evidently there are three maps of probabilities. There's a probability of being in a lowland area, which is this probability. And you notice here uh, that Walker Lake, of course, shows up as a low area and the mountains as high areas. So these have low probabilities. Then you have the probability of the foothills. And so they would occur around uh, the lake area and, and between the lake area and the mountain area. And then we have the probability of the mountain area, which is then these three. So don't forget, even if you have two categories only, then of course you have only one independent probability map because they have to all to sum up to one. You would still need to specify uh, two probabilities instead of one. Okay, so here we're in SGEMS now. And we see the same uh, data. We have our training image. Uh, we have our point set. And we have also uh, a set of soft probabilities uh, that we've seen uh, before. So the, the way of doing um, multipoint geostatistics using this SNESM algorithm, uh, which just stands for single normal equation simulation, and the history of that um, you can uh, look up in the MPS book. Um, is actually quite simple. The only thing you would need to specify a grid, a training image, data, and that's about it. There are a few, a few other parameters that I'll explain. So the grid on which we're going to simulate is this grid that contains the, these probabilities. So we can't simulate on a separate grid and then import the probabilities. We have to simulate on the same grid as the probabilities. So we still say we generate one realization and we specify our training image, which is this training image here. And then we have to specify the number of categories. So in SGEMS, we essentially have uh, a way of doing that by saying just there are three categories. And then the convention is that this is category zero, category one, and category two. So the first category has, this, uh, has these uh, particular probabilities. So you say, so where do I get them? Well, there are two ways to get them. The one is, is to look at, uh, at the point data. And so um, point data bar, we notice these are percentages, so that's about what I had entered, or you could look at the training image. Oh, sorry, training image. And then again, we see similar categories, or we can also look at the histogram of the probabilities. So probability soft, uh, P1. So then we look at the, for example, the mean uh, of these categories. And now we see a somewhat of a difference here that the mean uh, of this first category probability is 0 0.2. Uh, 
the mean of the second is 0 0.3 and the mean of the fourth is 0 0.5. So this, those are all reflective of uh, the proportion that we have because the mean of a probability over integrated over the entire field is the proportion of that category. So in SGMs, you have to make somewhat of a decision uh, or in SESAM, you have to somewhat make a decision which, which is now the proportion you'd like to use. And so in order to, for you to do that, um, then we can go to advanced tab here and say uh, we have this uh, whole set of things that you can read about. Um, not, not, they're not that important, but this one is important here, the servo system factor. So uh, we'd like to say, okay, how much do we want, want to reproduce those proportions? And so if you want to reproduce those proportions that I specified well, uh, then I put the servo system factor to high to 0 0.9. And so that will reproduce then these statistics. Uh, so the maximum of that is one. The servo system means that the system essentially tries to steer the simulations to uh, reproduce the probabilities that are speci specified in this target margin, marginal distribution. Again, this is a decision you have to make and you have to uh, think about what those target marginal distributions are, given that you here have very, various sources of information, whether it's point data, training image, and soft information. Okay, so as we've seen in uh, the YouTube lecture on uh, multipoint geostatistics, now you have to define a search template. So the search template is the number of nodes in the in that search template. So what does that mean? So let's go back to uh, the slides to look at that. So as we've seen in the YouTube video uh, on uh, SNESM or um, the, the class on multiple point geostatistics, the way we're going to do that is using what is called search template. So the search template, um, and, and the search template is being used then in a search tree in order to store all the available patterns uh, prior to simulation. I refer again to the lectures there. The way it works in uh, SNESM in particular is that the central node is a node to be estimated, and then I go uh, and order the nodes around that in increasing order uh, of distance from the center. So if I then specify, then I can specify two things. I can specify a search radius, uh, which is to say this radius, then it will only contain those nodes. And I can also specify the number of nodes that I'd like to retain. And so uh, these are two um, things you can specify. My advice here is not to bother with the search radius uh, and just take a circle, a big circle, and then only bother with specifying the amount of nodes that you have. For example, mm -hmm. if I take a big search uh, radius and I specify 20, uh, the number 24, then what I get is that basically my template looks like this. So the bigger that that number is, the bigger your search template uh, will become. So again, the search radius is not that important. It's also not really the equivalent of the search radius we have in Kriging or simulation. It has somewhat of a different impact. So let's not worry about that too much. So here we're back in SGEM, and so we see that uh, we have this uh, thing that I explained before. So you have a search uh, radius, uh, which, which is this thing, and this number of nodes in the search template. So what I do is I make this big, um, let's say I can even make this 100 times 100, it doesn't really matter. As long as you make it a circle, uh, and also if you have 3D, it doesn't matter the 100 here. What matters here is the 60. Uh, and so for 2D examples, I, I would use something between 40 and 80. For 3D examples, I would use something between 80 and 120. Now, what would that will do is, um, is it will uh, essentially define the uh, size of your search tree. Remember, the size of the search tree uh, depends on a number of things. First, it depends on the number of categories for us, first and foremost, but also the complexity of your training image, as well as the size of your search template. So the only thing that's left now is the data. Uh, so that's done here. Um, we have our hard conditioning data, uh, which is the point set and our var. Then I'd like to specify these soft uh, probabilities. So I click on here, soft probabilities, and I do choose properties and I see my soft probabilities. So again, we use the same convention is that the order in which you specify these is the order in which you have categories. And so unfortunately here, uh, this is called P1, but really it's the probability of the zero category because SGMs always start counting from zero, not from one. So imagine this is P0, P1, P2. So what I simply do is I move that to the other side and I have now selected my soft 
couple of these. So that's pretty much it. Uh, there's not much else to do. So it's, it's, uh, it's pretty simple. So uh, if I click run, then what you notice here at the bottom, and I'd like to point this out, is that your uh, search tree size is being specified. So here my search tree size is about a half a gigabyte. And so that's something you have to take into account uh, depending on your computer uh, memory. Remember that the search tree size can be quite substantial when you go to large training images and, and, and uh, large templates. So here we see uh, SNES Sim running, and so you see that I have various course grids defined. That was the various uh, nested grids that I have, and in this case, I had three course grids or three nested grids. So I have a course grid, a final grid, and then the final grid is my simulation grid. And so the final grid, of course, has the most nodes, and that would take uh, about uh, the longest computation time. But you see that the computation time here is is uh, potentially a little slower. Um, this is not um, the fastest version of this algorithm implemented. Uh, remember that this version of SGEMS is a quite old version, is a 32-bit version. So it's much slower than, uh, say, the 64-bit version and, and the, the more fast implementation of SNESM that we get in, in the later versions uh, that you can find on the, uh, on the SGEM source for its site. Okay, so we're done, uh, and um, now we can look at the results. So here we have our simulation result, and uh, it looks pretty nice. Uh, we get our mountain, uh, we get our nesting of the various uh, colors in the, in the right fashion. We get some of the, uh, uh, the color here uh, in the middle, uh, the green color inside the red color. We're constraining to our data, and it seems to be following the soft probability, and if you look at the uh, the histogram uh, of this realization, then we notice that we have the proportions which are our target proportions. So that's also very nice and something is better to verify. 